You might recall from our first class the new count model, one of the basic models we covered in our first week. The model contains the elements A, B and X. A is the sender, B is the receiver and X is some shared social factor that first of all influences the relationship between A and B and secondly is influenced itself by this relationship. Let's say A is Anton and B is Barbara. Anton and Barbara are friends and both like the movies of the famous director Xavier. Xavier's new movie comes out and Barbara absolutely hates it. She thinks it's pretentious and boring. The relationship between Barbara and Xavier has changed. She's not such a big fan anymore. As a result, the relationship between Anton and Barbara might change as well, since they now completely disagree on their appreciation of this movie and Xavier's directing. Also, Anton's relationship with Xavier might change. Perhaps he will start to see this movie in a new light as a result of Barbara's criticism. Or he will defend him avidly and as a result become an even bigger fan. Newcomb's model is important because it's one of the first communication models that includes the idea of a social environment that influences the communication process and is itself influenced by the communication process. It contains the idea that communication is used to construct and maintain a social reality. A reality that's very personal for every individual. This theory that communication is a building block of a social reality became popular in the 1960s. In their influential book, The Social Construction of Reality, Berger and Luckman argue that all knowledge about everyday reality, all knowledge that we take for granted, even simple and objective truths, are actually born from and maintained by social interactions. We know that lying is wrong, that boys play with cars, that motorcycles are cool, and that we should obey the law. Because as children and adults we are programmed by parents, friends, family, classmates and indirectly by mediated communication with ideas of what is real. We are socially taught seemingly fixed rules and truths that in reality are social constructs. This reality is unique for every individual. Our own reality lives, evolves and dies with us. And in a way, we are at the center of it. This is a theory of social constructionism that was further developed by scholars in the 60s and 70s. A key element of social constructionism is that people do not construct reality by themselves. We need to communicate with others to make sense of the world, to understand the rules of life and know where we belong and don't belong. This perspective completely challenged the idea that reality is fixed and objective and that the truth of that reality can be proven by scientists. This meant that scientists, according to social constructionists, had to study how reality was formed in the mind of people, how they use social interaction and mediated communication to create and maintain their own personal image of reality. New more qualitative, deeper and explorative methods were required for this. Communication scientists borrowed new methods from anthropology, sociology, political sciences and literature studies to gain insight in how reality or culture is formed with use of communication. New popular methods were in-depth interviews, textual analysis and historical and socio-political analysis. Scientists were also more and more interested in the social and political context in which communication was produced and received. We will discuss that further next.